Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. One of my favorite shows right here. This is Heroes Always Welcome. Uh, we focus on veterans, active military, and their and their families. Uh, we have Stephanie Rhodes with us. She is Woo! our first guest at the, re guest at the relaunch. Uh, she's a real estate professional over in the Tampa area, also a veteran. Uh, so we're excited to have her. And of course, back with me is uh, the brainchild behind, behind all of Future Home Loans. I'm trying to figure out how each week it'll be a new description, Rob. Um, Robert Lynn, he's our CEO of Future Home Loans, also a veteran. And if you haven't gotten that message yet, we are big on supporting our veteran and active military communities. Welcome to you both. How are you today? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much. Good, good, good. Doing awesome, Ted. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited. I love this. We got a ton of great feedback on our... Um, on our discussion, Rob, I've been out there kind of after you and I met last week. Um, I found a lot of veterans and a lot of uh, active military are really, really interested in getting the word out. They're a little bit worried about the market. So anything that we can share with them that's going to spark something, uh, I think will be super, super important. All right. So enough of me speaking. Stephanie, I told you before we went live that the audience loves to get to know you. They kind of want to know your journey. So if you'd share a little bit with us, we'd appreciate it. Of course. So again, I'm Stephanie Rhodes. Um, I am currently a realtor here in Tampa Bay. Um, I actually grew up in the middle of Kansas. So I am born and raised in the wheat fields. And so I pretty much like had a strong worth, uh, work ethic engraved into me since I was super young. Um, but I went into the military, into the Air Force, directly out of high school, um, August 26th. Of, I won't say the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, my thought process was I really want to serve my country. Um, I did my time in there. I worked finances in um, Washington, D.C., and I loved it. I met a lot of great brothers and sisters in arms. It was absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, I, I had to do something with my life that served after that. And I ended up getting a marketing degree and I got a nursing degree at the same time. So I was an ICU nurse for 12 years. And basically my thought process was I really was tired um, uh, because I worked ICU. So I worked a lot with families and their pa or and the patients, taking care of them in the end of their journeys. And so my thought was like, how do I bring everything together full circle? And what do I do to make a difference still in the community? And I'm like, okay, military and I can become a realtor. I've got the marketing degree. I can do what I need to do. And I really found my passion. Um, I actually am a PCS ambassador for McDill Air Force Base. So I work hands in hand um, with a lot of um, the members like that are PCSing in and out. Um, so I do a lot with that. My entire week this week is currently filled because of that. Um, so I've got some families coming in from Okinawa and Oklahoma City. So there's a lot, a lot in that mix, but I feel the best passion of my life by doing that. And I feel like every little stepping stone has created what I'm meant to be today. And I absolutely love it that way. So it, you should it, have your own show. Oh, thanks. Um, that was so good. No, I have a lot, I have tons of questions for you, but. I, sure. I, I don't want to skip over Rob really quick, Rob, uh, for those people who don't know you, uh, give them a little 411 on you. And then I'm going to ask you both a question about transitioning out. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we talked last week and it was, you know, I think my story is pretty similar to Stephanie's. It's like, how do you put together your passions of, you know, for me, it was finding somebody that that best deal, saving the money. And it is your home, you know, like you were talking about Stephanie, it's, it's family, it's healthcare, and then it's where you live. Those are your, you know, those are the three things in your life. So, um, being able to touch on on the the home front really, you know, really was a passion for me as well. So I'm I'm right there in the boat with you. I so, love it, so Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah, and that's one thing about our culture at Future too. It's just all built around that same process of helping people. Which I think once you find that passion, if you're a, if you're a people helper, 
um, you can't go back and do anything else. It's you just, can't. it's in your blood. Talk about uh, we the transition out. Was it difficult for you to find your footing when you got out of the military, Stephanie? Um, a little bit, but mine kind of was forced. Um, so I was pregnant at that time as well. Um, but my ex-husband was still in the Air Force and we were still being stationed from place to place. So um, when I got out, we were in England. So it was kind of difficult for me to find my footing, so to speak, on what I was going to become when I grow up, you know. <laughs> um, but I had some time to think, you know, while I was, um, you know, having my babies and doing what I needed to do as a mother. And um, when I got back stateside was really when I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do? And um, I dabbled in a couple little things with like home staging and things like that, just to try and get my feel of where my purpose really is supposed to be. And, you know, through God and my family and everything else, I was able to come up with, you know, life lessons and life things and happenstances. And it's brought me literally from there to here, kind of just being pushed along. <laughs> what was it? What was it like going from ICU nurse to um, dealing with real estate? It's I get that it's a similar kind of skill set. Um, but I imagine it must be a lot happier. I, uh, <laughs> that's my thought process. Cause I, I'm always amazed when we have, I have a, a lot of realtor friends who are actually nurses currently and still doing real estate. Yeah. And I'm always amazed at that dichotomy. I'm like, how do you, how do you mix that? So was it hard for me, for you to go from nurse to real estate or did you get, learn a lot of skills from nursing that you, uh, put into play with your real estate career? both um i actually was a nurse for about four or three years i just stopped doing nursing full-time and real estate full-time all at the same time <laughs> um about two years ago i really felt that you learn how to read people and what they need um and what their wants are not only from the patients and the families um and that incorporates into the real estate side too, because you can read their faces, whether they love this home or they don't love this home kind of thing and what they really are looking for. Um, so I actually get a lot of friends um, from nursing that are like, hey, how'd you do this? What are you doing? Can you help me get into real estate? Because I'm so tired of being at the bedside because it's exhausting. It's draining. It's 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 sad, um, especially in the ICU areas. It's it's a lot on your mind, physically, mentally, spiritually, you name it. Um, so it it wasn't so much difficult. It was more um, maintaining like the monetary portions, just getting into the real estate side of things, you know, because it's not easy right off the get go. Um, you're building a business, you know, you're creating something entirely different. And I, I feel like my drive is so strong that it doesn't matter what there is out there. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, I get a lot of people that I work with um, on a day to day basis that are military. And I mean, pretty much every part of my team that I have from lenders to everything, really inspectors, you know, everything um, has some sort of military affiliation. Um, I just feel like it's best suited because they know the niche that I work. Yes. I want to piggyback on that. I want to ask you both the same question and I'll start with Rob. Um, we've all experienced where realtors uh, sometimes turn their nose up at VA loans. Uh, they have an interesting perspective on they're difficult to deal with. Uh, they're not as easy as you think, Ted. It's not a solid loan. Rob, can you uh, speak to that from our perspective on the lending side? Yeah. Well, at first, first, I just want you know, listening to Stephanie and her passion about the the veteran and the transition or her transition story. Um, you know that 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 explains why she's a very successful PCS ambassador because she has been through that difficult transition and and can really relate to the to the family. So uh, kudos there, Stephanie. That's a, that's a that's a cool story. Um, you know, for us as a overcoming that that myth, and it's an absolute myth that VA loans are the best loans. Now they're not going to let a veteran get into a bad situation. So some of the rules are set up there to keep a young 
first time home buyer out of trouble. You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you could get in trouble doing that. And the VA underwriting guidelines are basically built around keeping a, a veteran safe, keeping them out of trouble, helping them make a good decision. You know, and if you've got people on your team that are focused on that, they're going to set that veteran up for success. And other places aren't, you know, some other places are just, hey, it's a, it's, they, they prey on the veteran as opposed to are there to support the veteran. Um, but as the market changes, as rates go up, as, you know, She's talking about how busy she is for people coming in from Okinawa. Like the the military beat never stops, so it's yeah. recession proof. It's it's a great line of business to be in and to be able to to support that veteran. You know, if you're not working with veterans in Florida, good luck being successful. Right. What, I tell you. Yeah. what about from your perspective, Stephanie, as a buyer's agent, and you're uh, you're you're one of ten offers, let's say and you're reaching out to the listing agent, how's your presentation with that? Because I am sure that you have a conversation with them because that myth, like Rob said, is still out there strong. And I feel like we still are continuing to fight it. How do you combat that? It really is. Um, So on the listing side, I actually explained to them the truths about how strong that um, loan really is. And if their house will um conform to having a va loan uh, working with it you know i'm all about explanation and information and the more info that you can give the listing side the better and more comfortable they feel about making the actual offer it's not just about the dollar sign it's about the loan security and va loans are the best loans they truly are and you know i felt like when i was doing a lot of listings a lot of them were choosing the VA buyers because they were being properly educated on it. Um, on the buyer side, I, you know, go in and explain to them the different tiers and what the, you know, criteria are for each of those loans. And, you know, again, education is key. You go in and explain to them, look, we're going to do everything that we can to get this, um, offer accepted. Um, I do work with a couple, well, one main lender that pays for the appraisers up front. And I'm all about hearing from more lenders too, you know, and they pay for that appraisal up front. So that gets things a little more ahead of the game compared to the conventional or even an FHA loan, because a lot of those um, don't pay for that up front. So I try and do everything I possibly can from every vendor's aspect to try and get the best of the best for every one of my clients. I love it. All right. As we wrap up, I want to ask you, Stephanie, um, there are civilians like me who've never been in the military, don't have military family. You're obviously enmeshed in the community. You're an advocate. Uh, What's the best thing that someone like me, not lending, just a civilian who wants to give back uh, to our veterans, what's the best way for us to get involved and do that? to get involved with veterans yes um so there are a lot of different things out there not just with the real estate side but different um i guess donation factors community factors i'm actually working with um, a company in orlando um for veterans it's an angels program that i'm trying to bring here to help a lot of homeless veterans um we have a lot of different services set up to help with, you know, sometimes people are having an issue with um, payments for things because of unforeseen circumstances. You know, people have gone to war. There's a lot of PTSD and things out there and people can't always survive on their own. So as the community side, I do a lot of helping um, with, you know, providing different things like that. And there's a lot of ways to get into that. Too many probably for this, Um, but I mean, they're more than welcome to call me and I can definitely gear them and steer them in the right direction. Fantastic. All right, any parting words of wisdom, Rob, that you wanna leave the audience with this week? No, and I I just do wanna commend you, Ted, for for this this series and and educating uh, folks and your reach in the community and your network. That's that's a huge benefit to our veterans is to get that word out with your incredible network of real estate agents that you work with. And, you know, we're super excited to, to be able to, to talk about veteran, you know, veteran mortgages, veteran real estate and, and give them a leg up now in the, in the process, which they really deserve. Thank you. Absolutely. It's a passion of mine. I Always love it. Has been. I, I just think it's in, uh, I want to get back. I know that you, I, I, I think of you all as heroes, regardless of what your service was, the sacrifice is still there. 
And so I'm a big proponent of making sure that our veterans get an active military, get all of the benefits because they have certainly earned them. And VA loans is one of the ones where we can really make a huge impact on their overall life with a house. So yeah. I'm a big proponent of that. Stephanie, how can they reach you, find out more about you, uh, engage you if, if they want a uh, list their house or they're looking to buy a house? What's the best way? You guys can call me, text me, email anytime. My phone number is 813-245-9524. You can email me at stephanierodesrealtor at gmail.com or look at my website, stephanierodesrealtor.com. Fantastic. And audience, friends out there, if you have a veteran-owned business, you want them to come on the show, you'd like to give them a spotlight. That's another thing I love to do. For the community, a lot of veteran-owned businesses are out there. Uh, the market's an interesting place. It's not just real estate. It doesn't have to be real estate or any kind of service that gives back to our veteran and active military communities. We'd love to have you on and spotlight your organization. Don't be afraid of VA loans, y'all. That's the message I get every week, and I want you to get it, too. Thank you, Stephanie, for being our Thank first you. guest on the relaunch. Thank you, Robert Lynn, for all of your words of wisdom. I appreciate you all. Support the veterans. Support our active military. It really is an amazingly big deal uh, what they do and what they give up for our country and for us. All right. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you guys. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you guys so Bye, much for having me on. Bye.